Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. We've spent a ton of time talking this Clemson team heading into the 2023 season, but a lot of the emphasis, a lot of the attention for us and the national media has been on the offensive side of the ball, right? K Club Nick, Garrett Riley coming in as the OC. And I think there's a fair point in, to, in saying if Clemson is going to reach their goals, which is a national championship in 2023, you're going to need to see some massive steps on the offensive side of the ball. But let's not get it twisted. This defense for Clemson is going to be elite in 2023. And I kind of realized we haven't really talked enough about it. So I want to take a deep dive into this Clemson defense, talk about some players to watch and why I think this unit can be so good heading into 2023. Now, before we do, just want to say one, thank you to you guys and especially the Clemson fans, whether it's recruiting, whether it's taking deep dives into these units, the support from the Clemson fans really does mean a lot. So one, if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel but more importantly and i truly mean it when i say it, the best part about doing these is learning from you guys talking ball with you guys so let me know in the comment section who you think stepping up on the defensive side of the ball for the clemson tigers again i have a blast talking ball with you guys in the comment section and without further ado let's get into this clemson team and i think the storyline for clemson heading into 2023 on the defensive side of the ball is the secondary. And, and this is not, I'm not necessarily saying this front seven should be ignored because if you see a list of top front sevens and it doesn't include Clemson in the top five, it's a bad list. This is an elite group up front for Clemson. But I think the 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 group that you want to see take a step is in that secondary that you look at Clemson last year on the defense side of the ball. It was still a very good group, right? Top 20 in points per game, top 20 in yards per game, giving up top 20 in yards per play, really, really good against the run, top five in a lot of metrics. The one part where they were kind of just average is a pa is in the past defense, right? In the secondary room. And I think there are a lot of storylines for Clemson fans on why that might have happened, right? One, battling some injuries. You, your, your freshman All-American in Andrew McCuba was what? A, a dislocated elbow, I believe. A sprained MCL. I mean, this dude was playing with half a body out there. And then one, another aspect was they were just really young in the back end, and there were some games, Wake Forest kind of comes to mind, where they got got a little bit, and you saw the inexperience kind of show. What I think this Clemson secondary can be in 2023 is truly something special. Now, diving into it, one, really like what you have in the back end. A healthy Andrew McCuba is one of the better safeties in the whole entire country. I think RJ Mickens can play. I know Tyler Venables can play. Uh, Jalen Phillips. What I think is really special about the secondary group and it's the cornerback spot. And again, an average group last year on paper, but the talent in this room is absolutely insane, right? You have Nate Wiggins, who I, I if you guys have listened to us all summer, I think Nate Wiggins can be a, a top 20 NFL draft pick. I mean, the the length, the athleticism that he has, the ball skills that he has, I, he if he puts it together in his third year, you're going to see him go in the first round. And on the other, other side, you have Sheridan Jones, who is a quality player for Clemson. Like, he's played a lot of good football. He's a graduate guy. That being said, come week three, come week four, when you get into the ACC schedule, I don't think that Sheridan Jones will be your starting cornerback because you have guys like Tor Torino Pride and Jaden Lucas who are kind of, again, you talk about the talent and the inexperience last year, hoping those guys can take the steps. Jaden Lucas, former coveted recruit, Torino Pride Jr., probably my favorite guy in this secondary room outside of Nate Wiggins, who you guys know I hold close to my heart. This secondary group, I mean, has the potential to be really, really good in 2023. And that's like the one, if you had one kind of gripe against this Clemson defense, is it was leaky at times in the secondary. But it's not like you have the same guys returning who are just old heads who, who might not take that step. You have guys who were banged up last year. I'm going to remind you, Andrew McCuba is only going into his third year of college football, so he's going to get better. And then you have a bunch of young guys who a year under their belt now, I think could really be special in 2023. Now we spent the first four minutes talking about this Clemson secondary that I think is going to take a massive step. Let's get into the fun part. And that, that is this front seven who, again, I said, if you see a list of Clem, a, a list of top front sevens that doesn't include Clemson somewhere in the top five, maybe even top three. I mean, it's a bad list because this Clemson defense, especially up front is absolutely elite. And you start with the most talented position duo you might see in the country, two future potential first rounders in Jeremiah Trotter and Barrett Carter. I mean, those are linebackers who you ask, and it's like on paper, you lose Trenton Simpson. You would assume that linebacker room takes a dip. I'll say it right now. Trenton Simpson, as athletic and freaky as he was, 
You asked me the two best linebackers on that Clemson defense last year without a doubt, I'm going Barry Carter and Jeremiah Trotter. I mean, these guys are ball hawks. They know how to find the football. They know how to get behind the line of scrimmage. They fly around the football field, and they're playing behind a dominant defensive line that, on paper, again, like I think this is why people might be ignoring this Clemson defense. You lose a guy like Miles Murphy. You lose a guy like Brian Brzee, who were phenomenal players, and you you listen to me during NFL draft time, like Miles Murphy was a top 15 prospect on my board. Brian Brzee was a top 30 prospect on my board. Those guys were really, really good. Clemson gets back some guys, and KJ Henry I might shout out too, probably a top 100 prospect. I forgot where I had him. He was also really good. Clemson gets back some names that I'm extremely excited about, and I first want to start with the inside of this defensive line that not only is the talent there, right? Rook O, Tyler Davis, two guys that, I mean, Rook O probably would have been a day two pick. Tyler Davis probably the same had they left for the NFL draft in 2023. They're coming back. That's probably, you talk about Barrett Carter and Jeremiah Trotter. You might be talking about an even better duo with Rook O and Tyler Davis up front. But more importantly, and this is something that we've learned from Georgia over the years, having depth on the defensive line is absolutely massive. And you're only as good as your depth, especially up front, right? Ruko, Tyler Davis, really good first team group. You take a look at who's coming in behind them. True freshman Peter Woods, who, I mean, Dabba Sweeney and the staff can't stop talking about every time I read a fall practice note or when I was reading spring practice notes, like Peter Woods is that guy. He's going to play really early for Clemson. And he's going to play a lot and he's going to play at a high level. And then you take a look at some of the other guys, Peyton Page, Trey Williams, those guys are all dudes who would start on a lot of other programs, not only in the ACC, but across the country. And they're coming in as rotational pieces for Clemson. You fast or backtrack two years ago, you had Georgia with what? Jordan Davis, Devontae White. And then you had guys like Jalen Carter and Zion Logue coming in as that two and three deep. That's how Georgia's defense was so elite. I think you're starting to see the same bones for Clemson heading into 2023. Now, the one question mark you have, and I, would, I wouldn't I would even say it's a question mark as much as who's going to be the guy is at that edge rusher position, and you're not going to find someone rooting more for Xavier Thomas than me. Remember him coming out of high school. This is a guy that, I mean, first-round talent, just plagued with injuries, and he could have gone a million different ways about his career, right? He could have gone to the NFL draft last year. He could have transferred schools because, again, when you're playing behind a guy like Miles Murphy or K.J. Henry, like you wouldn't blame someone like Xavier Thomas, for transferring and going trying to find a spot where he can get a little bit more playing time. On top of being banged up, I am really rooting for Xavier Thomas, who's going into his last year of eligibility for Clemson, to stay healthy and be that guy for Clemson. Because if he puts it together, similar conversation, a guy like Nate Wiggins in the back end, the, the talent, the potential, it's all there for a guy like Xavier Thomas. You continue down that list, Justin Maskell, a really, really quality player, Guys like TJ Parker, Vic Burley, I know has been battling some injuries. When you look at this Clemson defense from top to bottom, I think it's an elite front seven that's going to get after the quarterback. This is one of the best teams in terms of pressure rate and sack rate last year. I don't expect that to take dip even with guys like Brian Brazee and Miles Murphy leaving because you have guys on the inside. And if you're nervous about the pass rush, if you're nervous about who's going to get to the quarterback, I mean, you have probably two of the better interior defense alignment in terms of rushing the passer and Ruko Tyler Davis probably throwing Peter Woods as well as it gets in the country. So even if you're not getting the, the normal production from your edge rushers, which you certainly might with a guy like Xavier Thomas, you're going to get a lot of pressure through the middle. And with teams going to that read option look where they're trying to neutralize that edge rusher, I mean, that might be arguably where you want to have your pressure coming from to begin with. And a guy like Ruko. I think it is one of the better dudes in terms of penetrating and getting pressure. And then you combine that with a group that I think Clemson did a nice job kind of defending this secondary with an elite pass rush last year. Now for this secondary group, I'm kind of seeing it like, hey, now it's attack time. Like your front seven is going to be creating a lot of havoc. It's going to be a lot of third and long. So I don't see many teams running the football effectively on this Clemson Tigers team. Now it's time for guys like Nate Wiggins, Sheridan Jones, Torino Pride, Andrew Makuba. Like those guys, now let's have some confidence and let's go get some turnovers. Again, this was a team that was middle of the pack in turnovers for us. It was middle of the pack in secondary defense. This is a group that I think can take a massive step. I think they hold serve up front. I think they still have one of the best front sevens you'll see across the country. If you see this secondary take the step I think they can take in 2023, I this is one of the complete defenses 
And now we're talking about an offense that hopefully takes some strides, a defense that hopefully takes some strides. It was a top 10 team in the country last year. There's not much reason to be doubting the Clemson Tigers heading into 2023 because they have an elite defense that's always been there. And I cannot wait to watch this unit go to work in 2023. Wanted to do a little deep dive on this Clemson defense because I haven't felt like we've given them enough respect and spotlight. Clemson fans, appreciate you guys rocking with the boys as usual. And if you do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate y'all. And we'll talk to you guys later. Peace.